we continue with our uh, exploration of the proof rules. So we have proof rules for negation, uh, proof rules for conjunction and disjunction. Now we have to add an ability to handle other symbols in our logic. So the one important symbol is implication. So how do you handle implication? In the implication you have uh, this situation when you want to introduce implication. Okay? So remember that we had this pattern that entro, lm, and def. So let's see what how do you could you introduce implication. Let us suppose you can prove that key is set sigma union with f can prove g. That means that if you take this f on the other side, and this is very interesting, this thing can pull f out of the left hand side and put on the right hand side, and that will be very useful later on. Uh, f implies g. Okay, so once we have an intro, we need an ln. So what is the ln? Uh, so if you have a f implies g, and somebody also told you that uh, sigma can prove f, that means sigma can prove g. That means you know f is true. Put an f here, then you left with g. Now, as we've seen, then there's a def coming. Uh, f implies g can be turned into the previous symbols we have seen not f or g this is a very standard translation of uh, implication into disjunction and negation this this rule can be applied in reverse direction so we have seen the def can be actually go in either direction so this guy can be applied this way that way and that's it we don't need any more rule for implication Let's see how can we use implication in proving things. Okay, so for example, this is the setting. I want to using this prove Q. Okay, so how do we do that? Uh, we, from there, we can easily derive that P occurs in this thing. So therefore, I can derive P, and this thing is called assumption. Okay, so we call this assumption. Okay, now we have P there. Now we can see that here it is. Which looks like something uh, we can use because this is looks like a pattern of def of implication. So let's pull this one as out also and call it an assumption. Now, since it's a definition of implication, we can introduce implication instead of this uh, structure. So you say p implies q now, right? So this is def of implication. Okay, so that's the def of implication. Now, what do we do? What we do is that using these two, I think we can eliminate implication and get this Q. And that's what the last one says that if you apply in one and three LM, you get Q. Right? So for another symbol, we have this def thing, we are going on, we have LM thing going on, and we have a intro, intro going on. So these are the rules we have seen so far, and uh, these are the rules we use. A lot to prove. Okay? So you will see that in the exams, I will ask you to prove few things, and you need to use this rule to derive the needed statement for that particular problem. Uh, let's take this problem. P implies Q or P. Okay? So it's a, either P is true or P implies Q is true. Okay? It's a strange uh, uh, thing, but uh, let's let's see how can we prove it. Okay. Uh, so first, uh, it's a strange starting point. I'm just simply going to say not p in the left hand side implies not p is by assumption. We can extend it by q just simply uh, by doing intro of or we can well you can see that how it's going p implies q we get just by using def of implication. From there, again, we can use uh, disjunction intro, and we got this. Okay? This is basically this statement. So, from not of p, I can derive this. Okay? Now, I'm going to do. I'm going to use p and derive this. Let's see how can we do that. From p, I can derive p. From in p, I can simply introduce p implies q. It can always be something you can put in, and then we got. P implies Q or P 
E by it applying symmetry on this formula. Now we have two things proving the same formula. Can we apply somehow or LM? How do I do or LM? Uh, not P or P somebody can prove and then using P I can prove the required thing using not P I can prove the required thing then the required thing comes down here right so how do I derive not P or P this guy okay so remember that we allowed to pull something off on the left hand side is using application and we're going to use that so let's apply on this and let's see what happens and we get P plus P if I pull uh, this one out okay now if we apply P we have P plus P what we can do we can we can further apply the def of def, uh, implication and get not P or P and now we can apply the LM of disjunction on rule 9 on step 7 and 4 and we obtain our final result that's what we wanted to do okay so this is another example of derivation where you seem to be very proving something very simple but it takes some sequence of operations to get there there are more rules in our proposition logic we have punctuation to reason about and uh, equivalence we need to reason about and XOR to reason about we are not going to go in the lectures in great detail about that it's fairly obvious from the what we have discussed so far how these rules get applied and uh, what happens is usually when you're trying to deal with these symbols uh, you turn them into implication, conjunction, or disjunction, and negation very quickly early on in your proof, and then you do the rest of the reasoning. So it's not that uh, interesting to think about these rules.